woodland track. Better make a move on it. Lots to do. Oil painting again. And I've got the palette here, which you can see, I hope. I'm ready for action. I'm going to begin with some glazing. That is the transparent paint, of course, using liquid. This is the paint medium. The glaze is transparent, so it's uh, see-through. The liquid has been cut with some white spirit, about half and half. So if I glaze over here, the glaze is, you see the transparency of that? You see the ground I've primed up with acrylic primer on a commercial canvas. That's primed with a warm foundation layer. You see it gets a bit darker towards the base. See how a glaze goes over that and the colour underneath shows through. That's the concept of glazing. And in this instance, there is no white. If you look at the palette, the dark colours provide glazes. They're transparent. The lighter colours are opaque. So the dark, if it's dark, it's good for glazing. All sorts of colour can go in here. We've got burnt sienna, for example. It's a lovely see-through colour. Enough of that chat, let's get some painting done. Hope you can hear the brush scrambling the glaze onto the palette onto the canvas. Raw umber. Use that in virtually every demonstration. Burnt umber. It's slightly warmer relative. Now the thing about the glazing, I hope you're paying attention because there will be a test for those of you painting that is. The glaze can be patterned with other brushes. That's providing like a spiky textural mark. Let's get these corners shaded out. I'm bringing this area of glaze up to about a third. This isn't a glaze, this is ochre. This is cadmium yellow. So you can mix the opaque colours in. It's morning in the woods, we've got the sunlight coming this way. So these are a response to the sunlight. The burnt sienna will be good for that. Sort of put it to you that you instantly get a feeling of sky and land, the radiant brightness of the priming and the rich luster of the glaze. And the glaze has the properties of appearing to come forward and to approach the foreground. It's so rich and full of colour. We'll add some uh, cooler hues here. This is some blue going in. I've got the um, Winds are blue, and I've got some of the uh, raw, the uh, sorry, the ultramarine. Incidentally, when I struggle to find a word like that, it's a good thing. It means that my painting brain is taking over, suppressing the. Uh, the logic of forming words, verbalising what I'm doing. I don't know if other painters would agree, but it's a curious thing that you can actually engage with, um, I think you can anyway, music, or even a film in the background when you're painting. It doesn't seem to bother your painting brain.
and Simon will quite often have music going. I'm really keen when I'm working in the studio, long hours in the studio. It's great fun. But I put on podcasts to listen to uh, great thinkers of the day uh, in famous interviews. And I can take all that on board and still paint. See, I'm roughing up that edge there, trying to create forest textures against that light. You see that, uh, that dark tone appearing? That's a good thing. I'm trying to create patterns in the marks to suggest the form. Have a little more of this uh, burnt sienna and cadmium yellow. I'm trying to bring these in at about half an hour. Usually they overrun a few minutes, and that's my zealous enthusiasm taking over. But I try and get everything I need to say about it done in half an hour. Right, that's enough for now. Well, let's get some of this. This isn't glazing now. This is the opaque colour. This is uh, much uh, heavier. It's white. You see, it's almost identical to the priming there. That's white with a, a touch of yellow ochre. So you think, well, why bother painting it? It's about the same colour. Well, you don't have to, but I'm going to use this wet paint for certain effects. So I need, I need a, a fluid foundation. Get that on here. And then this other mix straight in. That's uh, you've seen me do this technique before, wet into wet. This is uh, more of a soft blue. It's the Windsor blue mixed in with some uh, of the ochre the white and there's some raw umber in there as well if you like your colour mixes and you see that's graduated to the right hand side I'm trying to create this sensation of light from the east or the south southeast We'll just loosely scramble these together. I want there to be a complete fusion and transition of the creamy colour going into the bluey grey. It's the vapours of the morning rising over the forest. Look at the colour properties of those two areas. The glaze, and the, there's a halfway house here where the, the background colours are intermingling with the glaze and fusing the edge. Brilliant to do that with oils. You're getting this uh, admixture on the canvas. Same over here. There's a soft boundary between the two, but look at the, it's a technical word, chroma, the uh, transparency and richness of the glaze, and the opacity and lightness of the opaque layer, the sky in the background. Two different ways of handling paint. If you're interested in your art history, the French Impressionism was all of this approach here with broken patches of colour, generally opaque. Old master painting tended to be that as well as all this transparency. And both of them are, are, are great merit. There's no right or wrong way in it. It's just that they give these varied properties to painting. I like to analyse the great works in the galleries close to Try to pick out what techniques have been going on. Cup of tea at the elbow. They've gone, those two miscreants. 
um, my old friend here, Atkinson Grimshaw, from Leeds City Art Gallery, uh, one of my heroes. Nice to drink tea from a cup with Grimshaw on it. Right. So, we're going to uh, engage now with the rest of it. Let's get these colours going. Got some lovely mixtures floating around. I've got a glass palette to hand as well, which uh, will supplement this one if it gets a bit um, solid by the mixing. This is the, uh, it's the, uh, I forgot the colour because my brain is painting. Windsor Blue, raw umber. Very intense dye, the Windsor Blue. I'm trying to use it up. Not that I dislike it, it's wonderful. I've seen that technique before on the sky demonstration. Risedale Forest. We're not so far away here. This is Rusland Valley. The fantastic, beautiful slopes of ancient woodland on U Barrow. We call it Skinner Pastures. I can make these up really from memory or just imagination, and I just constantly just have to think about the times camping in. Skinners rising early and seeing these wonders through the, the light coming through the trees. You're high up here on the uh, eastern side of Rustland Valley. Not so far from High Dam, Bawtry Tarn. And there's these deep clefts in the, in the woods. And you can look across these ravines and gulfs and the, the, the tonal separation in the morning light can often be really breathtaking. I've got some cobalt violet which I've used previously with the bluebells. I enjoyed it so much with that and it's come, come out to play again tonight. As we come forward, we step forward, let's get these tones to darken. Right, let's get these tones a bit darker. We've got ochre, we start to see some colour. And the sunlight kicks in at the foliage. I can throw a whole variety of uh, all our favourite trees into this. We've got magnificent Scots pines. It's uh, huge tracts of silver birch, oak, uh, hazel. The rock structure is outstanding. If you've never been up into these woods on Ubarrow, it's where the Rustland Beach is. It's still there, but the sad uh, remnant of their former glory. It's just above where the, the beaches were or are. The steep slopes there take you half an hour to walk up through the woods to the top. Let's get some profiles of trees against the morning light. It's got a standard filbert bristle. Just let the brush do the talking. It's just scrubbing and rubbing with a bit of experience in drawing. And just let the brush, when, once you get to that happy condition where the brush can just, you just sort of tell it to do trees and they somehow come out from the subconscious. And I understand it'll take a while to get there if you're starting out, but it's a great journey to get there. It's brilliant to hear lots of people taking up painting, giving it a go for the first time. What an adventure you have to come. That's my uh, backdrop colours. Just flick over those with a brush or two. Them to be nice and softly focused here and there. I'm trying to explain in the paint 
that there's a gradient here at some height here there is a gradient stepping down to the west these indications of treetops in the mist trying to formulate a sense of the slopes under the trees for the purity of that ochre against the opacity of the backdrop so now we're painting a forest track that's what we're doing and here we have to locate a track see if you like what happens next just uh, we'll put a bit of light in here i have a plan you see I want this to be in shadow, we can glaze away on that. Let's, uh, let's try some of this rich burnt umber. We can glaze it in, in real depth into there. A little bit of uh, lovely cobalt violet. Could be a rocky outcrop with tree roots coming out. This is starting to look a bit like the spongy moss I'm so fond of. But uh, just take a look at that brush there. There's two brushes here in action. There's a brand new filbert, which is great condition. And there's a scrubby old throwaway brush, the sort of thing you throw in the bin. But these can be wonderful for all of this. People sometimes, it's uh, my friend Steve who took up painting. <laughs> He's not the first person. He brought me a set of brand new brushes. I thought he was giving me something. It was... Uh, a noble gift, but he said, Graham, can I give you these brushes? I thought, how much, how much has he spent there? It's wonderful. Yeah, of course you can. He said, can I have them back in six months when you've used them? <laughs> it's a bit like a trendy designer Wrangler jeans or whatever that have been broken in by real live cowboys in Arizona and then inflating the price. So I'm the, uh, I break in the brushes for people sometimes. So you can uh, get them into this lovely condition constant use right this is what happens we take a cloth we take a cotton bud perhaps and we can remember the uh, the color of the priming we can re-expose that priming we're just wiping back the glaze here and it's got that um, underneath color showing through and with the uh, Takes a bit of time with these, but with the cotton bud, you've got a real precise implement for drawing into the glaze. We've got to keep it moving tonight, so I'm going to use a cloth. And we're going to bring the forest track into the composition. And my priming is exactly the right colour. I uh, sneakily planned it, you see so that I can re-expose through the glazes this meandering track that we're all walking through this evening even though it's a morning subject I'm trying to imagine myself into this location see that lazy Hogarth S running through Look at the perspective, how it's getting broader as it exits the painting, as it comes under our feet, and then it meanders away into the distance. Terrific. Great fun to do that. And then we can give it a helping hand with some sunlight. This is now the opaque colour, ochre, burnt sienna. And just plaster on some highlights over the marks that you've expo exposed for the track and you'll get this sense of sunlight and it's a device I use constantly see how the sunlight is uh, is only allowed to spill into the um, central area of the painting it doesn't come out as bright as it exits it's a device to throw the attention Right, where, to draw the eye along the path so we're inviting your feet to follow it where they will into this ravine and 
down the uh, incline to the valley floor through the woods. Now with the scabby old brush here. It, uh, can help the sunlight along. Just in this area here, so the light's breaking through. That's cadmium yellow, there's a bit of uh, ochre and a touch of sap green. Got look at that burnt sienna from the glaze. Just right there, bracken. Under the trees. Onward and upward. Now we'll take some of these mixes. Partly glazed, partly conventional colour. Ochre, sap green, raw umber, some of the blue. Not too vibrant colour, I just want to get some leafy textures rising up against the light. Some light flicking over the crown of these trees. Another well-worn brush selected for its texture. Here's something else for your notes. You remember the counter change. Counter change it, setting light off against dark. Here we have some light tree trunks showing up against the shadows. Cotton bud in front of those plumes of shadow. Dimly seen tree trunks emerging from the dense backdrop coming into the light. stuff happening up here. That sits cleanly over the wet sky because remember I brushed that in quite vigorously. Brushed it into the canvas threads. bits of uh, suspended foliage over the sky. Reason being is there's a, uh, there are a few trees to come in now. Let's get those in. I'm going to mix up a grey here. Just watch the, the following technique. It's, uh, it's very useful if you're learning to paint. We've got a script liner brush. If you can see that very long, finely pointed brush. Sometimes called, well, it's called a rigger, but when I was learning, I, the books I learned from called them script liners, and it stuck with me. And we put some white spirit into that, make it sloppy. You see, see that running down the canvas, down the palette, that gray. And that means that uh, with the, the rigger going into this sloppy paint, you should be able to uh, get it to slide over the wet paint that you already have. These swishing long strokes. I 
So light against dark and now dark against light. The rigor. These middle distance whippy branches of trees. Let's turn some of these light trees into dark as they rise up against the sky. Counter change. So a tree that at the root is seen as a light shape becomes silhouetted against the luminosity of the sky. delicate leaves in the sunlight, much more yellow, and these heavier leaves in shadow, blue and brown, a bit of sap green, plenty of generous gaps for the eye to go through. Enough of those, now for some heavyweight stuff. Back to the dark glazes. Mm, take courage. Raw umber. some light. This is opaque. Cadmium yellow, touch of green, occasional yellow ochre, little flickers of light. Morning sunlight coming through the leaves. Some of these leaves taking out the shape of the tree. Now to give it some extra density and weight where I can see it's going to go. This one as well. Yeah, 
Here's some sunlight. Catching just on the rim of that tree. And this one. I've got some evening light coming in here from the window. Beautiful. Trouble is, I'll need to draw those curtains. Um, because we're trying to focus the light on this. Let your eyes adjust to that. Yeah, I realised it was competing with my painting. I hate to shut the sunlight out. But this is... Um, northeast facing or north facing and uh, it's ideal light for a, a studio but uh, the light's getting round and it's coming into the studio very very little last thing at summer evenings it gets in here now I think um, there's one last thing I'd like to do if you'll bear with me Yes, I've uh, adjusted my eyes to that now. I didn't realise that the sun was gradually overwhelming my work. I'm trying to paint sunlight in the painting tonight. See, I'm, I'm starting to develop some shadows thrown out from these trees. and across the track. Feeling of dappled light. It needs a little bit of structure up here. Need a few branches there. But most uh, significant, I think, I'd like to just put these thick opaque highlights in to get the, sun, the final effect of sunlight on the painting. Got this cadmium yellow here. Got some the touch of virid, sparing trace of viridian. I've got some burnt sienna. We'll get the sunlight on this forest floor. the density here. I think we need some uh, some support here. I like that. Uh, I'm looking for ideas now as, I, as the painting draws to a conclusion. I see burnt sienna and ochre here. I see 
canopy of yellow. Where this bracken colour was too. Imagine the sunlight just glowing through the fronds of bracken. Striking the accent of warm light coming through foliage. All the time, conscious of the, uh, not to take out completely the, the build-up of the painting. That important backdrop of misty, misty morning light on the uh, distant woods. See, the pace has slowed right down. That's how it often is. Rapid build-up and then contemplating what you need to do to get the best out of it. Subtle things. This important splash of light here how it should just lose its strength as it proceeds to the right away from the light source how should it should gain force and luminosity as it moves in towards the light i think i'm only halfway there with the not with the painting with the possibilities i'd really like to spend time playing up the qualities, the parts that have worked well and refining out the bits that uh, not doing, not pulling the weight in the painting. But that's my walk through the woods. Thanks for joining us on this, um, what's a lovely spring evening here, but uh, I cons consider this to be a, a morning subject because I'm, I'm thinking of where I am in the landscape. But um, hope you can join us next week for more of the same or something, a different subject, but uh, more live lockdown painting. Great to uh, hear that you're all starting to engage with art, those of you who've taken it up. And uh, I can just say you're in for a lovely journey. So thanks, everybody. That's it for tonight.